Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video we're doing a comparison between a 2022 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 with the Extreme Recon package and a 2021 Ford Bronco First Edition. First and foremost, though, a huge shout out and thank you to Nate with Raptors of Insta. I'm going to include a link to his YouTube channel and his Instagram in the description down below. Let's get into the comparison. So let's go into the hoods of both the vehicles. Starting over here with the Wrangler, we have a Natchez aspirated 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 470 horsepower and then 470 pound feet of torque. It's cool to see the gold accenting right there. And then we have the hydro guide, which you guys will be able to see on the top in just a moment. It's another cool feature of the 392. Going from that to the Bronco first edition, we have a turbocharged 2.7 liter V6 goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Mission. It's good for 330 horsepower and then 415 pound feet of torque. So let's go over the front ends of both the vehicles and let's first get into ground clearance of both the vehicles. So we have 11.5 inches of ground clearance over here with the Bronco and then we have 12.9 inches of ground clearance with the Wrangler. Now coming over here to the Bronco, I absolutely love the design here with the hood. It's just, you know, super flat, right? And large and it just gives the Bronco this cool like classic boxy off-road type design. You've got the LED lights here for the Bronco and then the Bronco logo. The first edition gives you this cool like bar that pops up from the bumper. The bumper does have parking sensors integrated into it and then you've got the tow hooks as well. Uh, Nate's added some lights here into the bumper as you guys can see. Got the skid plate action here uh, underneath as well with the Bronco. And then you guys can see the Bilstein position sensitive shocks here with the Bronco. And then going over to the Wrangler, we've got that hydro guide, you guys can see. So it has that cool hood scoop appearance. 392 logo here on the side. And then you guys can see the Rubicon logo here with the gold trim around. We've got the LED lights here off to the side. And then for the headlights, this one's got the satin front grill. And then you guys can see the forward camera here. And then we've got all of the uh, bolts here because this has the steel bumper. And then it's the gold here on the tow hooks. And then we've got the fog lights down below from the factory. And you guys can see here with the front end, you can actually see the solid front axle. Again, we've got the skid plate action underneath as well. And that's one of the big differences with the Wrangler versus the Bronco. This has independent front suspension, whereas this has a solid front axle. Now let's go over the tire and wheel setup with both the vehicles. So starting over here with the Wrangler, we've got 17 inch wheels and wrapped around that we have 35s. Going over here to the Bronco, we have 17 inch wheels and 35s. Now this does have an aftermarket set of tires and wheels and actually I'll show the rear one because it's a little bit better in terms of the lighting. So this is not what this has from the factory in terms of the wheel, but uh, you get 35s with 17 inch wheels on the Bronco from the factory, just not this specific wheel, if that makes uh, sense. But yeah, both of them have super aggressive tires. And then here is a look at the front suspension with the Wrangler. And then also you have these extensions as part of the Extreme Recon package. Got this little accent piece and then the Jeep logo with the gold accenting around it. The world's largest uh, antenna sticking up here on the side. We've got the rock rails here on the side. And then coming over here to the Bronco, you guys can see the fender flares. Notice that the Bronco, they're just black. Whereas in the Wrangler, they're body painted. And then here's a quick look at the front suspension on the Bronco. And then again, you can see the rock rails. One thing about the Bronco that's cool is the mirrors are mounted here on the front. So when you open up the door, it's not on the mirror, it's on the front. So if you take off the doors, you still have mirrors. Whereas on the Wrangler, the mirrors are on the uh, door itself. That thing is still wiggling from when I touched it earlier, which is hilarious. And uh, yeah, popping here to the rear, this is where you guys will be able to see the shocks with both vehicles a little bit better. So we've got the Fox shocks with the Wrangler. And then you guys can see the Bilstein position sensitive shocks with the Bronco. Uh, I've taken the Bronco off-road. I haven't taken a 392 off-road yet, so I can't comment on the off-road capability of these shocks yet. I can tell you on-road, these shocks are very comfortable. With the Bilstein position sensitive shocks, they're very comfortable on-road and off-road they can handle high speed and low speed stuff uh, pretty well. Not as good as something like a Raptor, for example, with its active system, but these shocks do a, uh, Pretty good job. 
We've got the key fobs for both the vehicles. This one's the uh, Jeep key fob. It says Jeep on it. And then you've got the Bronco key fob, which says uh, Bronco on it. So I guess the Bronco key fob's a little bit more specific. But you guys can see functionality is identical. Remote start on both of them. And, well, uh, sorry, Nate. I got to uh, put your car to shame. So we got the 392. And, uh, well, we can do the Bronco. You guys might not be able to hear it. Yeah, we're gonna have to shut off the 392. I mean, it's got a V6, what do you expect? Now let's pop into the rears of both the vehicles, starting over here with the Wrangler. Opening this up, uh, definitely heavy with the 35 on the back, but easy with the functionality. And then you guys can see the window. Uh, storage space back here is fantastic since this is a four door. Now it's got the 12 volt back there and you guys can see here the extra storage space and then for all the top stuff if you take that all apart which is pretty cool and then closing it is just as easy so you can see that functionality and uh this has been reinforced to fit the 35 so you guys can see the reinforcement there and then the led lights that come with the jeep and then you guys can see the parking sensor here at the bottom of the bumper we already saw the aggressive exhaust tips that come with the 392. Now popping over here to the Bronco, you guys know I got a little bit of beef with the uh, opening because it kind of like half opens and then you got to push it a little bit more and then it kind of does full compression with the strut and yeah, it's uh, kind of frustrating to open. Window does the same thing as the Jeep. Now, if you get a four door Bronco, the storage space in the back is like identical to the four door Wrangler. This is a two door Bronco, so this isn't a fair comparison, but I just reviewed a two door Wrangler and I can tell you the storage space is about the same with this uh, two door. So they're pretty much equal on that front and closing the window. Closing this is easy, so I guess that's a plus. It's easier to close this than it is the Wrangler. And this doesn't feel as heavy with the 35 as the Wrangler does. So I guess even though this is easier to open than the Bronco because you have to do like two compression points, you're not having to push as much perceived weight is what it feels like with the Bronco. Hopefully that makes sense. I know it's kind of weird, but hopefully that makes sense. Got the LED lights here, parking sensors on the bottom and let's pop to the inside. So we're just gonna open up a uh, bunch of doors uh well we'll go to the driver's side in a second but anyways let's pop here to the uh front door panel here with the bronco so you guys can see the material use here on the interior got some nice padding they bring the exterior color here onto the inside the mirrors do have blind spot monitoring uh, but notice there's not a whole lot on the door panel itself and then you can see the seats here with the first edition they've got these nice leather seats i like the bolstering on them the appearance of them i think looks great as well they're manually adjustable and then you do have to pull the seat forward if you want to get into the second row uh, legroom in the second row of the bronco is actually pretty similar to the second row of the wrangler the only difference is with the bronco you have since this is a two-door you have to move the front seat whereas this you obviously have access since it's a four-door uh, so that's really the only difference though is just the access to it the room is pretty similar uh, moving back to the bronco Got the grab handle here with the Bronco logo. Got the light controls just down below. And then you guys can see the whole pedal layout system. And popping in, you guys can see the steering wheel here. So you've got leather all around. And then you guys can see here with the cruise control, it does have adaptive cruise control. You've got your volume controls, controls for the center stack. And then as for the gauge cluster with the Bronco, you got this pretty cool system, right? You've got the analog gauge for the speedometer and then the rest of the stuff is fixed into like a screen, which I think looks great. And then the cool thing about the Bronco is it has a bunch of different drive modes. We have normal, eco, slippery, mud ruts, sand, Baja, and then rock crawl for the different uh, drive modes. And so that's definitely a cool set of customization. And then this is important. The Bronco has a front stabilizer bar disconnect, front and rear lockers, trail turn assist, stability control, and then the hazard lights. But the big thing is, right, the stabilizer bar disconnect and the lockers. And then here's a 12 inch infotainment system. If I actually pop it into reverse, you guys can see you've got a full 360 camera system with the Bronco, it's got the bird's eye view. Uh, there's a camera button down below that you can press. And then that'll give you like the front view. So from a camera perspective, the Bronco's amazing. Infotainment system's amazing. Response time on the screen's great. And having the big 12 inch display, I think is a huge positive. We have our analog controls for the radio down here. You got the analog controls for the climate system. This has a dual zone climate system, heated seats, heated steering wheel. And then you got the extra storage space here. And then you got the first edition plaque right there. Shifter for that 10 speed automatic transmission. Drive mode and drive line select. So this has two wheel high four wheel low, 
four wheel high, four wheel auto, and then the off-road cruise control, window controls here in the center, and then you got your normal center console, glove box. They're pretty similar to the Wrangler. This has pretty similar storage space in terms of the center console to the Wrangler. We have four, or sorry, six auxiliary switches, not four, here at the top. And then we've got the insulation. Sorry, let me give you guys a little bit more light. Insulation here at the top. Uh, this is the hardtop Bronco. Uh, this helps out quite a bit in terms of like temperature control and then also uh, in terms of like sound deadening and all that fun stuff. Okay, so we gotta go over the Wrangler. So you guys can see a little bit different approach in terms of the aesthetic here of the door panel itself. Uh, obviously it's just as practical. It just doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing in my personal opinion. Still got blind spot monitoring here in the mirror and then you guys can see a little bit more controls here on the door panel itself. And then here are the seats in the Wrangler. Uh, so I think the overall like bolstering on these seats uh, looks a little bit nicer from an aesthetic perspective. I've got the Rubicon 392 logo. Seats are manually adjustable. Then you guys can see the pedal layout down below. If you get a Bronco four-door, you actually can get power seats. That's why I'm kind of mentioning that. But popping in. <laughs> Gotta love that V8. So as for the steering wheel, it's really nice. You got leather here at the top and at the bottom, perfect leather on the side. You can see the paddle shifters, all of the controls for the center stack. We got our adaptive cruise control, that fun stuff. And then similar to the Bronco, right? You've got analog gauges and a screen. The screen isn't as big here with the Wrangler. Uh, but you get a screen nonetheless. No drive modes or anything here with the Wrangler. It's always in sport mode, I suppose, right? Because it's got a 392. Anyways, as for the infotainment system, you gotta pop in reverse. When we have two camera views, front and rear, there's no 360 camera, and the infotainment system's significantly smaller, right? You just have an 8.4 inch screen versus the 12 inch display in the Ford. But functionality is pretty similar. Heated seats, heated steering wheel, all that fun stuff. And then a bunch of analog controls down here for the climate, for the radio. We have our exhaust valves with the 392. So if I press this, quiet mode. And we have our loud mode. So that's pretty cool. And then all of your window controls here in the center. Four auxiliary switches, so you're down two here at the Wrangler. We have our Offer Plus sway bar disconnect, front and rear lockers. So just as practical from that perspective. And then we've got our driveline select. So we have four wheel auto, four wheel part-time, high part-time, neutral, and four-wheel low. So no two-wheel drive like the Bronco has. And then the shifter for the eight-speed automatic and then storage space. Like I said, center console, that kind of stuff is pretty similar. And then I've got the insulation here at the top. Notice it's not as extensive as the Bronco. The Bronco, it's like the whole thing across. Whereas this, right, you still have uh, some stuff exposed. So it's a little bit different in terms of the appearance. Uh, but both of them are just as easy to take off in terms of the two front pieces and then the rear. Obviously, the two door is easier to like carry the rear off because it's lighter because this is bigger but uh yeah that's the interior so now let's talk about pricing with both of the vehicles. So a first edition Bronco, if it was a four-door, because I actually purchased a first edition Bronco four-door last year, stickers for about $64,000. This Rubicon 392 with the Extreme Recon package stickers for $86,000. So there is roughly a $20,000 price difference between the vehicles. So I already know in the comment section below, I'm gonna get a bunch of comments about how V8s are the best thing ever. And because the Bronco doesn't have a V8, it's not cool. But let's be realistic here. $20,000 is a lot of money. Does the Wrangler feel like it's $20,000 nicer? The answer is not exactly. However, the powertrain in the Wrangler is absolutely phenomenal. Obviously the Wrangler does have a little bit more capability than the Bronco. It has more ground clearance. It has a solid front axle, which is better for crawling. The Bronco with the independent front suspension, is great for high-speed off-roading, but it's not gonna be as capable from a crawling perspective. That being said, most people won't be able to reach the upper limit of what the Bronco could handle from a crawling perspective, and same thing with the Wrangler. So it's kind of like a point that doesn't really matter. Now, if you're looking at, a, I guess, mall crawling, either of these vehicles, the Bronco is obviously more practical. It gets better fuel economy. It's less expensive to uh, purchase compared to the Wrangler, but obviously the Wrangler with the V8 is significantly more exciting to drive on road. You got the sound, you got all that fun stuff. And so if I had to pick a winner, I'd say the Bronco's a slightly better value, but the Wrangler obviously has that emotional aspect to it that makes it exciting. And I think that at the end of the day, the Wrangler is like the super special vehicle that's gonna go down in history as being like the craziest thing ever because it's, uh, it's a Jeep with a 6.4 Hemi that you can offer and do all this crazy stuff with. Whereas the Bronco, right, it's, uh, it's a little bit, it's, it's still a really cool special vehicle, but it's more normal, if that makes sense. That's gonna sum things up for today's video. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to Nate with Raptors Event Stuff for giving me some time with his Bronco. Check out his Instagram and his YouTube channel in the description down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.